Hello and welcome to Bruce Springsteen Guitar Lessons. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn your favourite Bruce tracks on guitar. Every Friday there will be a new lesson complete with a full walkthrough of a song with tab plus a breakdown of all the individual parts. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon for notifications. Okay, so this week's track is Atlantic City from Nebraska. Uh, thanks very much to Francisco Novo for the request. Also be sure to check out the end of the video just in case I go through any parts that aren't in the walkthrough. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is go through the song and then I'll come back and go through all the parts. So see you in a bit. Hello and welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that walkthrough. So now what I'm gonna do is go through all the individual parts. Okay, so like I've said in previous Bruce videos, I like to simplify things as much as possible um, so you don't have to change your strumming you know, all the time and it's based upon sort of a main strumming pattern for this section and then a main strumming pattern for this section, et cetera, et cetera. Now he will change it, uh, especially live, um, so you know, just be aware of that it might not be exactly the same as the record but this will work 
really well uh, and it's pretty close so okay so the actual song is in f minor on the track um i think this is the one way we're recording it in his kitchen on a cheap kind of four track so it's it's really kind of laid back um now if you wanted to play it over the actual original recording you put a capo fret one then you also have to kind of tune it slightly sharp i think just to match the pitch of the recording i'm just going to keep it in e minor you know just in case you haven't got a capo or, or whatever okay so basically what you've got it's got the chords are e minor g c and g this is just for the verse okay again i'm simplifying this uh, strumming pattern now i think sometimes he also like live for example he kind of picks the notes kind of like that i think he plays like a e minor c add nine Um, so you're more than welcome to play a C add 9 instead of the C or even a C with your little finger on it as well. Entirely up to you. So again, you can mix it up. So this is all based on, strumming wise, uh, the verse section is based on that classic down, down, up, up, down, up pattern. Again, so this is used a lot uh, in Bruce songs and also for loads of other songwriters as well. So if you get stuck on the strumming pattern, uh, head over to jsmusicschool.co.uk, go on blog and go on strumming and you'll see that there. So it's your down, down, up, up, down, up. So this pattern, I'll go through it again. So you've basically got a crotchet to start with, one beat. And then you've got two quavers, so down, down, up. And then you've got a tied note for a quaver, which is basically means you lit the, the chord ring. So down, down, up, and it's tied and then up, down, up. So basically one crotchet, six quavers that last for half a beat each and one of them is tied. Cool, so that's, that's the main strumming pattern for this, uh, the verse section. So down, down, up, up, down, up. But what's happening is he's changing uh, each bar, he's changing to another chord on the and of two. So this is, in this case, uh, we've got this, E minor to G, C to G. Yeah, you can hear that, it's a really awesome uh, strumming pattern. I think he, sometimes he does this. So he misses out the tie, but you can play around with it as much as you want. So, so I'll do this again. So this is the verse section, which also happens in uh, the chorus as well. So it's really prevalent throughout. So, okay, so timing wise again, so you've got E minor, down, down, up on the G, C, Using that pan, so one, two, and three, and four. Cool, so then he's going to go in this in the second verse. There's no intro in this song, it goes straight into the verse. On the second verse, um, so the first verse you do it four times, that two bars. Cool, the second verse you do it three times, and then on the fourth time you do this C to D I've kept it with the same strumming pattern but sometimes he does stuff like this which you're more than welcome to do as well so this is the fourth uh, kind of line of the verse so you're gonna do this E minor to G and C to D again feel free to mix it up the strumming Cool, so then you've got the chorus, which starts off with one line of our normal pattern. E minor to G, C to G. Then it goes E minor to G, and then it goes to D, E minor. And then the last line of the chorus is back to your normal bit. We do that line twice. Also notice that I'm playing the G uh, with my second, third and fourth fingers. Uh, you can also play it like that or, or whatever, okay? But just make it consistent. I think that's the key. Um, and work on the accuracy of the timing and the strumming. Uh, it's kind of, because he's on his own, it's not always a strict um, timing in terms of you know, how fast and slow he's playing. So just be aware of that you can kind of ad-lib a little bit. Um, uh, okay, cool, so 
now what we'll do is the break where he comes in with a harmonica. Uh, now what I've suggested is this is call 16th note uh, pattern. Okay, so what we've got here, and if you're if you struggle with 16th notes, semiquavers, and what the hell they are, um, a 16th note is basically a quarter of a beat. So one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. Often strumming, you tend to have a quaver and crotchet pattern, like we've been doing. Or sort of semi-quaver strumming, which can be a mixture of crotchets, quavers, and semi-quavers, like this. One, two, E, and, uh, or something like that, okay? So again, if you're struggling on 16th note strumming, head over to Jay's Music School, go blog, go strumming, and you'll find some stuff on there. So my suggested pattern is he does something similar to this, is one and two and a. So it's a two beat pattern, and it's got um, three quavers, all down strokes, one and two and a. Okay, so down, 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 up. And this will work really well over the first um, harmonica part. So, and it's gonna be half a bar of E minor, half a bar of G, half a bar of C, half a bar of G, and you do all that line Twice. Okay, so. Okay, so also, don't forget, I'll put the song structure in the description. I'll also put it on the screen now uh, so you can have a look at it. So, the way I do my song structures is I keep it really simple. Um, and the chords in brackets basically means there's up to you know, a few chords within one bar. So, for example, in the break, you've got that E minor and G in brackets. That basically means there's two chords in that one bar. Again, check the walkthrough for the tab and what I'm doing now for the actual strumming and how you do it. Okay, this is good to just go through the actual uh, song structure and how many times you do each part. So that's the first break. Again, song structure in the description as well. Okay, so the third verse. Um, is exactly the same as the second verse, okay? So that's where you put the C to D at the end of it, okay? Now, what we've got is the second chorus. Now, the second chorus is actually simpler than the first chorus. All it is, is your normal verse chords. E minor to G, C to G, four times. Cool, so now I've suggested the second break okay so this is where it actually changes the chords uh, this is with the harmonica and what we've got which is what I've suggested again he changes it up a little bit uh, again it's a 16th note pattern as well so we're gonna do this one two e and a. now that second beat can be quite fiddly if you're not used to these time type of uh, rhythms um, the second beat you're gonna do a dotted quaver which is three quarters of a beat followed by a semi-quaver. So the first two beats are one, two, E, and a. Again, check the walkthrough and slow it down if you want. Uh, you can use the cog icon in YouTube, um, just in the bottom right-hand corner to slow down the video, um, which is, can be very useful, especially if the tabs sort of pop in and out. Okay, so I'm gonna go through these first two beats of the second break again. So one, two, E, and a. And then beat three, three and four e and a. Uh. So that's the whole bar. So one, two e and a, uh, three and four e and a. Uh. And again, you might do embellishments. You might do things like this. Yeah, which I think I do in the walkthrough by mistake. But um, this will work really nicely. So one, two e and a, uh, three and four e and a. Uh. Okay, so C to G. And then so that's G to C, and then G for the second bar of the break. So you got this um, one and so one, two E and a three and four E and a one and two E and a three and four E and a. So again, so that second bar is one and so you go from G to C. To G, so one and two E and a three and four E and a. Okay, it's really good for this to practice these uh, different types of strumming patterns. Okay, 
and you do uh, the the second line is just going to replace sorry the second part of this section is going to replace the last G with a D okay so the first two bars of the second break are Do that again, but we'll replace the last G with a D. So, okay, and then basically, you do those last two bars another two times. So, you're going to do Free to play around that with yourself um, and mix up. You don't have to do the same strong pattern. It's just I found that one works nicely. Okay, so um, yes, yeah, so it's, it's all about you getting used to the quavers and the semi-quavers and that timing. So one, two e and a three and four e and a one and two e and a three and four e and a. Okay, so now we're into the middle eight section. Okay, so the middle eight section is where it kind of um, just changes slightly, okay? Uh, this happens in a lot of songs where eight bars, 12 bars or whatever, it's just slightly different from the rest of the song, okay? So we've got C major for a whole bar, E minor for a whole bar, and then I've suggested C to D. We go to the D off the bar, off the beat, uh, in the same way you do in the, the second part of the verse. So do that again, so C major, E minor, C to D, whole bar of E minor, C major, E minor, then C to G, five times, that's three, four, five. So again, you can mix up the strumming a little bit, I'll do that. A bit again. So C major, so this is middle eight. C major, E minor, C to D, off the B. Uh, back to E minor, C major, E minor, and C to G five times. Again, the G is coming in on the and of two. Okay, and once you've done that five times, that last bit, you've got this D. I think he does change that C add nine there. Um, again, this is kind of the timings, you, know, you can be quite loose with the timing. Uh, slow it down a little bit. Um, we've got D. So I kind of arpeggiate this C add nine chord, um, which is basically you're kind of separating all those notes within the chord. <coughs> okay, so that's D. So I'm going one, two, and. something like that that's what I've got in the tab uh, but you can you know it doesn't have to be you can do stuff like that if you want so D and then C at 9 and then I'm picking the E and the B and then doing the C at 9 again picking the E and the B C at 9 picking the E and the B cool okay so I play that whole of that uh, middle eight section okay so you got C major E minor well, sorry, I forgot where it was. Uh, so C to D, E minor, C major, E minor, C to G. So number two, number three, number four, number five, and then. Then you've got that break section, which is the same as the first break. So the third break, same as the first one, with that kind of one and two and a three and four and a one. Do that nine twice. Cool, okay, so then you're in the four first, uh, exactly the same as your kind of um, verse section, but without changing from the C to the D. Okay, so basically what you've got is E minor, 
uh, E minor to G, C to G times four, yeah? So nice and simple. So again, really work on the uh, accuracy, of that, the timing and the strumming. So you do that four times and basically the final chorus, you keep doing it, yeah? So E minor, G, C and G. And it fades out on record. So you feel free to do this as much as you want. Uh, now the live version, um, I'm just thinking of the kind of the full band version. You've got, um, you really want to get good at that kind of break version. And that's where he does that kind of um, And I think what he's doing really in the live versions is kind of picking the notes. So feel free to play it like that as well. Cool, so I hope that's um, clarified everything, clarified everything for this song. Uh, again, it's just my own kind of take on it. Um, again, I'd like to keep it as simple as possible. Feel free to um, give it a thumbs up if you like the video. And uh, any comments or suggestions, please let me know. And uh, I'll see you next week. Thanks very much. Cheers. Bye.